Before we start the recap today, there's some exciting news. Oh my god, I got recognized in public, in real life, this weekend. That's something I thought would never happen in real life, and uh, I'm still a little bit shocked. Um, but I'll tell you the story in a little bit. But as for the market showing up today, it's definitely one of those days where you look around, you're just like, Hello, is, is anyone here? Like, is anything gonna happen? Like, what's up? Hi, the market's open, wake up. No one showed up to the market. I still took, you know, two trades, um, a couple of others, like small scalps, um, but it was it was a really um, quiet day, let's just say that. So the two stocks on my main watch list was Dis Disca and Viacom. Discovery Channel was up with the, the partnership and uh, new standalone content company with um, AT&T. Um, so that, I mean, that's positive news and Viacom, it was up from um, George Soros taking a stake. Um, but if you look at the, the daily chart for both of these stocks on Viacom, you can see a um, huge drop on the daily from $90 down to low 40s. And same as on uh, Discovery Channel, um, both of these stocks, if you, you can look at on the daily chart, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a stock that basically got dumped um, from the highs all the way um, from this one from 70s all the way down to 34s. So both of these were part of the, the what was the, the Archegos hedge fund blowing up and you know they had to you know liquidate their entire position so that's what caused the huge dump um, and today it felt it was just another press release to get the stocks gapping up and for them to continue selling off if you look at the charts on Disca and also um, Viacom which was the first stock I started trading today. Both of these look extremely weak today. Uh, if you look at Viacom, like I, I was short bias on both of these stocks. Um, on this guy, I didn't get an entry at all until much later. Um, but on Viacom, you know, this thing gapped up from 38, 90s to 40s. Uh, when I started in scaling in short around the key levels, $40.30, $40.50 .30 area. Um, um, actually got stopped out on starter first and after seeing that high of the day rejection um, slammed back down to VWAP and on the pops that's why I started adding back um, into the short position um, so after rescaling in all the shorts um, around 40 20s and then 40 40s and later on right here 40 20s um, had a pretty decent average about 40 30s but keep in mind I did take a small loss early on but after that scale in, we got a nice unwind um, down to 3090s. Um, I was out half of it around 3960s. Had a re-add and I just decided to take um, all of the short position off. And this thing you can see after I covered, it just tanked from 3960s all the way down to previous day close, um, 3890s and went red on the day. Um, while I was short bias on this, I did not think it was going to give back the entire gap. Um, so that kind of, that's kind of how you know, like when the bounces are so weak and it could not even retest even VWAP or back to 40s, that's where I was looking to re, um, re-short and re-enter the, the short side position. Um, it, it was just so weak. It's in a straight um, downtrend all day uh, after it cracked the, the $40 mark around um, 950s. Uh, so just very weak. This, this is how you know the stock is weak and they are still um, liquidating their, their positions. They might not be done yet, um, even after a month. So that was Viacom. I left a lot of money on the table. Um, I mean, in hindsight, it looks like you could have, I could have, you know, went back in and reshort these uh, little retests of the, the pre-market lows around 90, uh, 39, 80s and, you know, down to 39s. But there's no way I could have known that this was going to be this week. Um, and, and it would feel like it's chasing the weakness on the short side. And I don't really want to do that. Um, the other one that I miss, missed completely is Discovery Channel. You can see after the 42s break down pre-market, it went to $40. That was going to be the level I was watching for the short. Uh, at the open, 39 is spiked to 39.70 and just just no bounce whatsoever um straight down liquidating um 39 70s down to 37s um so a lot bigger range than um viacom and uh 37s down to 36 
previous day clothes and even went red on the day. Uh, I just had a small scalp knowing that, you know, it's already so weak. So it's, it's very difficult to, to sh short the weakness knowing that this is already kind of like below red on the day. Uh, but this is indeed very weak. It, it does feel like they were just selling, um, taking advantage of the overnight gap up to sell even more shares. And let's be clear that when you see these kind of heavy sell off and, uh, you know, the, the volume breakout on the daily with the sell off side, um, this is the, the funds and whoever uh, was still holding the institutional positions on uh, Discovery Channel, liquidating the position. So it's probably still the, the Archegos fund. They have to like slowly liquidate their positions um, but it just it's just very weak so this is the, the case where um, no matter you know whether the indicators or the or the anything that tells you it's long um, us little retail traders cannot fight the funds if they decide to sell the position on the stock and same thing as Viacom and the charts look very similar um, but Viacom was a little bit better because because it actually gave us um, little retail test to at these high 40s to short into instead of just dropping right at the open like the disca. So a slow day like this with so minimal trades call for a story time. Um, so I've never been recognized in real in real life before. Um, and but that actually happened this weekend. And of all the places that this would happen where I would get recognized with a mask on in public, it will be yes. You guessed it right, a bubble tea shop. A huge shout out to Tiger Sugar Vancouver. Um, the owner was there and he recognized me and I guess my friend as well and treated us to, uh, to some very delicious black sugar bubble tea. So thank you so much for that. I was, I was in shock. Uh, I was probably more like, more in shock than he was. I was just like standing there awkwardly for a couple of seconds. He was probably thinking, oh my God, this humble trader really is as awkward in real life as she is on camera. <laughs> But yeah, that was just such a cool and sweet experience. And I never thought that would happen. So thank you to everyone who supported me. And, uh, and now if, if you guys happen to see me in real life around Vancouver, please um, don't hesitate to like come up and say hi. Um, just keep in mind that it be, might be very awkward and I don't know what to say. We do also have some trading questions that I want to answer. Um, the first question is from Cardi. Uh, essentially, she's asking that if I'm trading more pre-market in the current um, market sentiment. After seeing what happened with Disca and uh, Viacom, especially what happened pre-market, I think... I think, you know, this is, would be the market condition where I cons would consider more pre-market trades. I usually try to avoid them, um, but recently the, most of the big moves happen pre-market um, with a, the with a breakdowns. Um, the breakouts are failing as usual as, as it was the last two weeks, um, but the big sell-off on the, on, the, on the gap ups happen pre-market. So I might consider that, but usually I try to avoid too much pre-market trading and even if I get into any of these trades long or short pre-market, it would only be pre-market size. And I always prefer to add into it after the market opens with more liquid action and uh, more range and you get the highs and the lows um, determined on the day. And then we have a second question. It's a very good question from Big Bola. Um, so he's asking that at what, how long within my trading career did I start trading high price stocks like Tesla? because they use a lot of margin. Um, so I Tesla wasn't always this expensive though. Remember Tesla was once only $100, $200 and $300. Um, and then and that was also a pre-split when I started trading, uh, trading these large cap stocks. I would say with a stock range above $100, I didn't start trading them until year three and four. But my focus early on was on the, in year one and two, was on the large cap stocks as lower price range. Around 30 to 50, $50 was the, the perfect, um, perfect um, sweet spot, I think, for the large cap 
um, price ranges. Um, because with a smaller account like I had at the time, year one and year two, it's all about account building, right? If you are trading a small account, that's probably your goal as well. Uh, for the large cap stocks, I always recommend them over the small cap stocks for account building. Because for large caps, even if you can only take 100 shares or 50 shares, they are more predictable and they tend to hold their trend. So, you know, if a large cap stock, $30 stock move a dollar, 50 shares, that's $50, 100 shares, that's $100. You can really start building your account slowly like that. Even with 50 shares, that's no problem at all. I have done a video on this, on how I built up my account. Um, so if you want to check that out. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video and the bad jokes. If you want to see more day trading content, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more. If you'd like to trade with me daily and get my free weekend watch list and trading journal, make sure to check out the links below for more resources. Stay green, stay positive, and I'll see you guys next time.